Jen Shakti here on another shamanic adventure. Today I'm on the banks of the Kern River following some of the YouTubers that I follow to find petroglyphs. So I was really surprised, I guess sort of, to find that there are so many people camping here. It prohibits my exploration around the edges of the river because literally there is tent cities on both sides of the river. So I'm not able to kind of drive around and be on foot looking around as much as I like. Another tip being that it's July, summertime, and everyone's out, we're up and out early. So at this place, we have an example of a historic old, it's just a piece of a wall that was built to be a mill off of this river. Here's the remains of the wall and this huge natural stone. And the, what's left behind here is a very gentle and protected swimming hole. And even without the wall, this would have been a good place for native people to come and get cool and have drinking water. And let me show you something else here that I found that's interesting. Again, another part of the remains of the retaining wall for the water that was built in later times. But looking here, what at first we might think are mortars, but in my imagination, this almost tells me maybe this was a way that spirit taught native people to make mortars in the first place. See what happens is when the river is really high and there's a little indentation, if stones are in this indentation over time, the current of the river will agitate stones and eventually it will start to wear its own natural mortar. So this may be something that attracted people here in the first place because they're everywhere. Already made. This one here has the stone that was likely Oh, that's, that's part of the stone. That doesn't come out. But maybe this stone turned around and around and around this harder piece of rock and created this odd indentation. And here's another and another, like, steps going all the way down to the water's edge. There's an old bolt that was part of construction anchoring likely some timbers for the building here. And here's another. Our quest for petroglyphs and pictographs continue. This area is just so full of boulders. It's gonna take a lot of exploring and looking around based on the things I know to look for. Big flat areas where there may be village sites, where streams ran through, promontories where native people could go and survey the area from 360 degrees. But here we found a very obvious clue, the lodge at Painted Rock. So we followed the signs and right outside the gates, we found this rock. This feels authentic to me. I questioned it, but let's take a closer look the patina of this paint is very worn. The edges of the image are very worn. There's places where the rock is showing through again. 
and it's just this one boulder. And you can see in the landscape, there are boulders everywhere. So I'm looking for unique features that would indicate a, a place of interest where something special occurred, where the people felt there was a place of power. A place where spirit spoke place to be remembered, boundary markers. So what does this sign of one human with hands up mean? Does this mean stop? This is a habitated village. I'll be wondering on this for some time to come. This whole area is covered with food. Pinion and oak. So there would be abundant food and game, acorns and pine nuts galore. So what I see down here is where water flowed through. I see a site where water flows through, acorn trees and big flat areas of bedrock. I hope there's some mortars down there. Let's take a look. Still no mortars, but we just found this sweet spot that I would think would be a great site. So we're taking a close look to see if there's any signs of habitation, but it's very protected with cliffs on both sides. And Brandon saw this, and on this trip I'm seeing a lot of things that I wonder inspired Native people to paint on the rocks. Now this rock, we've been seeing a lot of lichen that grows on these rocks that's a very bright red. Native people didn't use that as a pigment, they used ground hematite or red ochre, but the way that shadows play on rocks, places where there's shelters. Another thing to consider is that, well, today these trees are nice and tall and, and give great shade. You know, that oak may only be 50 years old. So this landscape would have possibly looked very different 300 years ago, a thousand years ago, when some of the pictographs in this area have been dated. I think the trouble with this is, is that whatever you're looking for, the mother load is one rock past wherever you just stopped. I find that as we're looking, we just start to see petroglyphs everywhere, which is part of the excitement of looking for these sites. but. Look at how, you know, there's just marks on these rocks and this is just natural, but places on the patina where there's zigzags and curves and unusual things. The cleaving in a rock is often where there might be a petroglyph. Rock faces that reach the sun. So the river's out here. Even though we haven't found tons of petroglyphs or pictographs, this has been an amazing adventure. I really appreciate you watching and tune in next time. Let's keep exploring.
I wanted to take some time in this postscript to thank the staff and volunteers at the Kern River Valley Museum. These wonderful little small town museums are often just so welcoming and the people so friendly and helpful. They pointed me in the direction of a couple of new books that I got, which I'm reading cover to cover and getting more clues for my next adventures and factual historic information that I can share. So whenever you're visiting these small towns, check out the museums, make a little donation, buy something to support them, because usually they're just operating on a shoestring, but they really just bring uh, vital importance to preserving the history, and especially the indigenous history that I'm interested in, in these places. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in part two.